Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam amma ba'd habita fillah Allah Azza wa Jal says fi kitabi al-kareem wa'budu allaha wa la tushriku bi shayin Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says and worship Allah alone and do not associate partners with him here Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given us an given us a an affirmation and a negation or a prohibition. He began with the assertion, you know, asserting for us, <clears throat> commanding us, Qala Subhana wa budullaha. Worship Allah alone. So he's affirming Tawheed. He's affirming that all worships belongs to him, to him, subhanahu wa ta'ala alone. And then he negates taghut, negates false deities and false worship, anything worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He said, wala tushriku bishayin. And do not worship besides Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala anything. Anything or anyone. Ahabati fillah, Imam Ibn al Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, he mentions in <coughs> his book, Tariq al Hijratain, rahmatullah alayhi rahmatin wasi'ah, about tawheed and the importance of tawheed and how it's a strengthening of the heart. And, and again, this is talking about actualizing tawheed. We're not talking about just knowing three categories of tawheed and that you can rattle it off and you can mention some of the ayat and you can mention some ahadith of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hadha ni'ma minni amillah, hadha ilm. Whoa, big shotgun. That's ilm, that's knowledge. However, it's acting and understanding and knowing that knowledge. So having that ilm should protect, help to protect you from some of the sins that we uh, fall into. So Ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, he says, <clears throat> know that the slaves of Allah need to worship Allah alone without associating any partners with Allah in their love for Allah, nor associating any partners in their fear of Him, nor in their hope in Him nor in their trust upon Him, nor in their actions for Him, nor in their swearing by Him, nor in their taking an oath by Him, nor in their submission to Him, or their humility and proclaiming His greatness, nor in their sajda, their prostration, and attaining closest to Allah, meaning, you know, uh, uh, تَقَرَّبِ اللَّهُ سُبْحَانَهُ وَتَعَالَى تَوَصَّلُ And none of this is greater, not even the body's need for its soul, nor the eye's need of light is greater than this need of worshipping Allah alone without associating any partners with Him. Rather, there is no similitude which can be measured against the need to worship Allah without partners, and thus gaining closeness to Allah. Indeed, the actual reality of a slave of Allah is his heart and his soul, which Allah alone is able to rectify. There is none worthy of worship except him. Look at Ibn al-Qayyim, rahimahullah ta'ala, how Ahli iman was sunnah, how they make ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, how they speak and exalt Allah and find that their total sustenance, their total substance is in need of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. That, that Imam al-Qayyim here, alayhi, he mentioned several types of ibadah, tawassal, a dua, sajda, all these different types of ways of worship of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Meaning that there's so many ways to please Allah if you learn your deen and learn what ibadah is. That you can draw near to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many ways. Seeking His pleasure and His favor and making ta'zim of Him, tabarak wa ta'ala. Shaykh al-Islam ibn al-Qayyim rahimahullah ta'ala, uh, Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah 
رحمة الله عليه رحمة الواسية دي شيخ إمام ابن القيم رحمه الله جميعا he was talking about the concept of worship and how comprehensive it is he said العبادة اسم جامع لكل ما يحبه الله ويرضاه من أعمال الظاهر والباطن Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah, he mentioned about the concept of ibadah, of worship, and how comprehensive, he says, as a comprehensive term, he says, it is everything that Allah loves and is pleased with, from your deeds that are open and your deeds that are uh, hidden. Those things which uh, please Allah, and earn his love and his favor, that's called ibadah in Islam. So that's why Ahl Sunnah, they go with a defi- that definition, that comprehensive definition of what it means to worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And that seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala can be done in a multitude of ways. And that that is the sure reality for the believer is seeking the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala because that was what is why we were created. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, Kitabil Kirim. I've not created mankind in the jinn except for the purpose of worshiping me. So that's why we were created. We were created to worship Allah Azza wa Jal. That's why we were created. So that should be our goal and that should be how we actualize and understand that that's how our success is if you want to realize success in this life then truly worship Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and seek his pleasure in his bounties and his favors worship him and him alone understand the concept of ibadah strive to draw near to Allah strive to get the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make ta'zim of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala through kathrata adhkar dhikr of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala making dhikr all the time exalting him avoiding what he hates doing what he loves this will earn his pleasure and this will give you success in this life as well as the hereafter I ask that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala blesses us to be able to practice this and may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us of our sins And may Allah tabarak wa ta'ala bless us to practice what we preach and avoid the sins and draw near to him and be of his, be of the muttaqeen. And may Allah protect us from these guys and their wild gunfire and any other kind of trials and tribulations and difficulty we may face. Wa sallallahu wa sallam ala nabiyyana Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam.